I've had the privilege of um, being Rebecca Moravec's friend. She's been fighting cancer for a couple of years, and um, to, her, to her credit, she agreed to spend a little bit of time with me in talking about this process of dying. Rebecca, tell us a little bit of who you are. Well, thank you, Sean, for <laughs> nagging me to do this because I really want people to know who they're praying for because it feels like that's mostly what people know me as a name and a prayer request for the last few years. I started coming to Trinity Alliance in February of 2016, mm. instantly bonded with the Leopards and the Ericsons. And yeah. Haven't been able to come to Trinity for the last few years very often. I live in the virtual church world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a shut in like they used to call people <laughs> years back. I prefer to think of myself as um, bubble wrapped. Yes. Um, bubble wrapped from germs and bubble wrapped from stress and and the physical exhaustion and, and you name it. But because people don't know me well, they need to know that I don't remember a time where I didn't know who Jesus and God were. I was f fortunate enough to be born in a family of multiple generations on both sides of my family that were deeply in love with God. and. I really didn't know him in a personal relationship way in my own ownership mm. of salvation until I was um, 16 and in high school and mm. life was really, really became tough and mm. there was nobody left to turn to except God and so I asked him to give me a reason to live and he did. Mm. It's amazing because I grew up with an inherited um, anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. a very severe uh, anxiety disorder as a child. And what we didn't know is that the traumas that came with the death of my mom and mm -hmm. alcoholism of my dad and stepmom um, and other tragedies that have occurred almost every decade since would complicate my relationship with God. You've been battling cancer for a couple years now, two and a half years or so. Uh, so where are you at and in that and what, yeah, what's, what's happening there? Yeah, I was diagnosed in February of 2020, stage four mm -hmm. ovarian cancer. And um, I had a brief time where I was no evidence of disease. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then when I had a recurrence in June of 2021, I was labeled in my medical records chronically terminally no. ill. Yeah. And I find it kind of funny because the, the, we've had a lot of conversations, my sister and I, of, well, aren't we all chronically terminally ill the moment <laughs> we're born? Yeah. And so since June of 2021, it's just been more and more disease progression and mm -hmm. different battles of choices of drugs to try to beat it. And mm -hmm. then um, since June of this year, I've been offered hospice services twice and um, refused it <laughs> twice. <laughs> and um, the first clinical trial that I uh, attempted after that first hospice offer um, has failed mm. and um, my disease is progressing quadruple tripling in size every couple of months um, and traveling through my lymph system mm. so um, they're you know they're saying six months or less and I'm saying no <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm kind of in the stage of bargaining with God going I have um, list <laughs> Right. I have to finish this list. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 That's good. So, uh, you know, that's one of the things I'd love for you to share a little bit about is what, you know, has this done to your relationship with, with God? Just increased gratitude and thankfulness hmm. millionfold. I mean, I'm not where I was a year ago. Yeah. 
and I'm not where I was two and a half years ago when I was first diagnosed, and yet they're telling me now that I'm dying. Because of cancer, I have had time that I've never had before because I was so busy being Martha my whole life, and I didn't realize why I was being Martha so much, not because of the fact that I was really good at being Martha, but also because if as long as I was Martha, I didn't have to be Mary. And now I've had forced times of being Mary and just nobody there but me and God sitting at his feet. Um, and now I'm good at both. <laughs> and I'm really, awesome. really enjoying that because I realized that when you are just with you and God, you have to look at yourself and you have to face what you have filled your life so full of that you've had no time to work on. And I um, love the song um, by Lauren Daigle, You Say, because Satan spent my whole life helping me believe the lies that I received through um, dysfunctionally imperfect human beings from society, from my own lies to myself, of never feeling like I measured up and never feeling like I was good enough to really be loved. And now I, I get to experience God through my five senses every day. Yeah. yeah. So good. <laughs> And, you know, I get to reframe every time those old patterns and habits come back in. I imagine a mm. picture frame around me and, and God's looking at me through that picture. Mm. And I'm finally seeing myself through his eyes mm. consistently right. yeah. rather than yeah. inconsistently. Right. And um, <laughs> my biggest fear when I was diagnosed with cancer is that I wasn't going to have enough time to learn how to live without regret. Mm. And I can say that I have that wow. now. Wow. Uh, when and if it ever comes, I will go with peace and no regrets. Yeah. Amen. And I'm really thankful for that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Such a gift, right? Yeah. So, um, speaking of redemption, fighting cancer, battling all that, as you kind of already alluded to, it's a battle, it's difficult, it's hard. There's a lot of things that uh, uh, you make it so it feels sometimes impossible. What's the beautiful pieces that you've seen through this? Like, what, what has God shown you in that? Well, way? first you asked me um, to think about the beauty of death, too. Mm. You asked me when you, and I kind of feel like I'm being forced to think about it. I mean, um, who chooses, right. you know, who right. chooses this path? Um, and when I think about death, I have to admit that those old fears come back in. Yeah. And so that reframing thing again. Yeah. Um, so right now I'm concentrating on thinking of that I'm going on a, a trip. It's always been a favorite thing of mine to travel. So I have a suitcase and I'm packing my suitcase to take a trip to heaven. The problem is, is there's no, there's no real visible, tangible Martha list tour guide thing that I can check off and you know, I, and the reality is we don't get to take a suitcase to heaven, right? We don't, you know. My dad's favorite photo is a U-Haul behind a hearse. Um, so it's hard for me to uh, start disconnecting mm -hmm. from the things of the world and letting go of um, changes that are happening in my relationships with people, mm -hmm. people withdrawing from me mm -hmm. when I don't want them to. Yeah other people showing up mm. when I don't expect them to um, and um, 
just trusting that this is going to be the best trip of my life. I'll be doing my typical just existing in my own living alone world and all of a sudden four birds will show up in my backyard and start <laughs> singing competitive songs and I think those birds are singing those songs to me and then a lot of days now I'm noticing the wind on my skin just the sense of pleasure from the wind on my skin and getting the opportunity to have enough time, downtime and, and focus to feel the, the simple things of, of the wind, yeah. um, knowing that someday God will orchestrate the last breath that mm -hmm. I take, mm -hmm. but for now I can breathe, yeah. whereas yeah. two and a half years ago I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, it's just all those five senses every day and God's talking to me through those and he's telling me what it's going to be like and just little baby glimpses through his creation that heaven's going to be even greater. Hmm. Rebecca thank you for sharing a little bit of your story with us. Um, it's uh, sometimes can be hard to, to try to express uh, what's going on internally, especially when uh, it is very personal and it's, um, you know, cancer and, and, you know, the possibility of death, it, it, it really stirs things in us. And so to, for you to give us the, the gift of allowing us a peek into what God's doing in you and through you in this time is, is, is great. So we just really appreciate that. And, uh, we are praying for you. We love you. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, no, it's six months now, not yet. <laughs> you can tell, <laughs> this is time. not the picture of hospice. We got more time, exactly. <laughs> we got more time, so yeah. Yeah. thank you. <laughs>